evening, everyone. Welcome to the Sky Observers Hangout. I hope you guys are excited. I hope. Adriana, I want to introduce you. How you doing? I am good. Um, so hi, everybody. I am excited that people are here, excited to be here with you guys. Um, I am Adriana. I'm an astronomy educator at the Adler. Um, Michelle is Michelle. <laughs> yep, I'm Michelle. I'm the Director of Public Observing at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. We are so excited. This is our very first Sky Observers Hangout public program. And so we hope we've got people tuning in in the Chicago area and all over the world potentially. Um, and so we're just excited that you are here to hopefully look up with us. That is our whole goal for Sky Observers Hangout is to get you outside looking up at the sky, either as we're doing the program or a little bit later on in the case of this particular one right here. So we hope that you have a lot of fun with us. Now, tonight we've got a couple other people helping us out behind the scenes. We have uh, moderating our YouTube chat. We have Jennifer. And we also have another special guest out there looking for questions in the YouTube chat. And I do this every time. He probably cringes every time I do it. That's okay. We're still going to keep doing it. Adriana, we have a special name for our friend Geza, who is an astronomer at the Adler Planetarium. We call him Stargeza. We he call was him born Star for stargazing, you guys. He was. He was. And he is a great friend of ours. And so um, he is out there looking for questions as well. And that is the whole goal of this. This is not just us talking at you from your computer or from your phone. We expect you to participate with us. You might want to send a question. You might want to uh, send a comment. You might answer a question that we put out there. Um, so you might see Jennifer put something in the chat that you can respond to. You might hear us say a question that we might want to see what your comment is. And one of the very first things we want to say is, where are you tuning in from? Where are you joining us from? We'd love to know. Um, so please put that in the chat. Um, we hope you can uh, stick with us throughout the entire program. Ask us questions. Uh, we will try to get to as many of them as we can. We may not be able to, it depends on how many people uh, send us questions. Um, but if not, hey, you may see one of your questions forming the basis for a new Sky Observers Hangout show in the future. So if we don't get to your question tonight, don't worry, we might in the future. Now, with the Adler Planetarium is currently closed to the public, but this is how we are going to be participating with you virtually we all share the same sky. And so that is the goal is to, to uh, get you out there looking at it. We can't be with you in person, but we can be with you uh, digitally. And by the way, we're doing this program from our houses. As you probably could tell, you may see a flub or two. You might see a cat wander through my entire view here in front of the camera. Um, you may see a family member accidentally pop through the view. That's okay. I think we all kind of get this whole Zoom and YouTube thing <laughs> for the past few months. So forgive us for any technical flubs and pets and other things that may happen during the show. So Adriana, do you have anything else you want to say before we get started? Yes, first of all, um, I would love to see a cat, so I hope it happens. <laughs> I'll try. I'm looking. I don't see one yet. Oh, yes, I do. But he's staring out the door, so I think That's we're okay fine. for now. We'll leave him yeah. be. Okay. Um, second of all, we are excited that you guys are tuning in from all of these different places. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to see um, all of these people in the chat. Uh, so we are sad that we can't be in the same space with you, but we are excited that we can be here sharing space with you. But um, okay. Um, so if the Adler's work matters to you, uh, please consider donating to support us um, so that we can keep bringing you Sky Observers Hangout and other out of this world programming. Even a dollar or two helps. No amount is too small. So just letting you guys know. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and kick stuff off by talking about what Chicago Henge is. That's the title of our program today, right? So we wanted to start off by letting you guys know a little bit more about what it was. So I have a question for you first though. Uh, who has seen or heard of Chicago Henge before? Has anybody tried to take a picture before? So go ahead and let us know in the chat. Um, Michelle, have you seen Chicago Henge before? 
I have, I have. Um, and it's, it's uh, really interesting that sometimes when I'm driving in a certain direction, the sun might be right in front of me, um, just really low on the horizon. So that's, that's when it can get a little annoying. <laughs> but if I'm not actually driving, um, it is really cool to see um, a, the sun maybe framed by, uh, by, a build, by a couple buildings or, or framed in the street or something like that. So um, anyway, we're going to show you some pictures yeah. of what this is. And um, this happens every year. So uh, it happens ab about the time of the equinox. So the equinox is, Adriana, when yeah. is the equinox? Uh, the equinox is tomorrow. <laughs> Woo! So the equinox is tomorrow. So um, the our name for when the sun lines up with our east-west streets, we call it Chicago Henge. And the rising and setting sun lines up just right with those streets. So this allows us to see the, the rising sun or setting sun, depending on what time you're doing it, framed in between the buildings. All right, so we're going to uh, show a couple pictures. So let me share my screen so you can see this. Let's take a look. Yeah. I do see a couple people in the chat saying that they have gotten the opportunity to see it. Oh, Michelle, I think you are in presenter view. Whoops, hang on. That's what happens when- Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties, <laughs> hang on, hang on. But I am loving hearing from people in the chat. Um, some How's people that? have seen it, yes. Uh, Bob Gores has correctly identified uh, the picture on the right as actually Manhattan Henge. Shh. We cheated a little bit, um, but that goes to show that the same thing doesn't just happen in Chicago. It also happens in Manhattan. Um, I'm still loving that picture on the right hand side. And honestly, that's pretty similar to what you would see in downtown Chicago, um, looking through our big tall buildings on our city streets. Yep. Now the one on the left, that picture on the left doesn't look like it's lined up with the streets. Hmm. Not quite. Okay. We may uh, talk about that a little bit. So do you need me to go on to the next one? Yeah, so we're gonna talk about, um, or actually we're gonna go back to um, just speaker view, Michelle. All righty, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Yeah. There we go. Cool. So you might be wondering why we make a big deal out of this alignment that happens with the sun between the buildings. Uh, so if you are um, one of the lovely people here from Chicago, you know that Chicago is not usually the best place to catch a sunrise or a sunset necessarily because there's a lot of tall buildings in the way. Um, you can at least get a sunrise pretty easily because it's on the lake if you're looking out east, uh, but getting a sunset is kind of difficult with all the buildings in the way. But during these two times of year, the fall equinox, which we are experiencing tomorrow, um, and the spring equinox, it's gonna happen again, so if you miss it, don't worry. Uh, but during these two times of year, we're actually able to see the sun um, because it lines up with the streets, giving us a great view between our buildings, and it gives us a great photo op too. Um, so talking a little bit more about that, Michelle, why does this happen? Why do we get to see Chicago Henge? Yeah, so we, we always use the phrase, oh, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Well, that's true, sort of. It doesn't always rise directly east and it doesn't always set directly west. So um, in the northern hemisphere, the sun rises in the northeast and sets in the northwest in the spring and summer months. Um, and that's when the sun is higher in the sky. And it rises in the southeast and sets in the southwest in the fall and winter months when the sun is lower in the sky. But there are two days out of the year when the sun rises directly east and sets directly west. And that is on the day of the fall or autumnal equinox and that's tomorrow and um, the spring equinox and that's coming up in March and so that's why tomorrow is the best day to view Chicago Henge. Um, so Adriana why are we calling this Chicago Henge? What where did we just make this up? Where does this name come from? It comes from a place I'm wondering if anybody in the chat might know. Do you guys have a guess <laughs> as to why it might be called Chicago Henge? Let us know. Hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the crux of it is that viewing the sun at different points uh, throughout the year is not um, in, in certain positions at different points throughout the year is not new. Exactly, Erin Wilson in our chat has identified our picture here as Stonehenge. Michelle, we are seeing the speaker view again, so if you oh could make goodness. it. Oh my goodness. 
So you gotta love, you gotta love PowerPoint and Zoom just working great together, aren't they? There That's, we go. There we yes, go. we've got it. <sighs> All right, so we've got some folks mentioning in the chat. We've got, um, it's related to Stonehenge. So Stonehenge uh, itself is this large collection of rocks. Um, it's still the subject of many theories about its builders and original intentions. Uh, but views from specific spots through the outer stones will frame the setting sun on the winter solstice um, and the rising sun on the summer solstice. So there's still some speculation about other alignments that might be going on with other rocks, but because it is so old and we don't have um, written records of what it was, people are still trying to figure out uh, what alignments might have been intentional and what might just be something that we get for fun. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's a, it's a really interesting thing. First of all, the word henge means kind of an earthen ditch or a, a ring around um, these stones and the stone, so the stone henge. There are other henges or a lot of henges in, um, in Great Britain. Um, and so the other interpretations of Stonehenge, you gotta, you gotta think, take a look at this picture, really study it. Look at the person, look at the people who are in this picture. They're tiny compared to those stones. Those stones are enormous and there are many of them and they came from a fair distance away. Why would they expend that much effort just to make something line up with something else? There may very well be other uses for Stonehenge, but like Adriana said, they did not do us the favor, unfortunately, of leaving a written record. Like we built this because, insert, reason here. Um, and so there are lots and lots of other reasons for Stonehenge to exist. It is not just a solar calendar, but it may operate partly as a solar calendar. And we call structures that work with the sun at different points of the year solar calendars. And amazingly, Chicago can work as a solar calendar. Just as we said before, we all share the, the same sky. We are linked with the sky above us. And apparently our streets are too. But I think some folks may have some questions. Adriana, you wanna get some of the questions from the chat? Let's see what we got. I know we had some to start yeah. with and one of them intrigued us greatly. So we had some questions from social. My favorite one is, does this happen with the moon too? We know that Chicago can act like a solar calendar, but does it also line up with the moon sometimes? And Adriana and I saw that question uh, before we started and we went, we both had the same look on our face of, huh, <laughs> I bet it does. But we, it, it's kind of hard to, to figure out exactly when the moon's orbit is tilted with respect to the Earth's equator. And so these times wouldn't necessarily line up exactly. So we decided, all right, we're going to dial up the sky using one of our desktop planetarium programs. And well, when is the full moon, say, going to line up? And we were really surprised. I'm it's, really excited about it. <laughs> yeah, we were we were truly excited about this. So I'm going to see if I can show this. And all righty. How's it look? Ooh, we, see it? Yes. Excellent. There we I'm go. I'm seeing some dark red clouds. OK, so this is a desktop planetarium program called Starry Night. Um, I, I like this one. There are many others called, there's Stellarium, there's um, various others you can get for your computer, for your phone. And so I said, hmm, when's the next full moon? Well, I know that the next full moon is October 1st. And look at this. So this is October 1st, Chicago, which means for the Northern Hemisphere, this should be good. Look at this, look at this, look, 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 look. There's the moon right there. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dial this backward in time just by a few minutes. Look at that. Look at that. Is that not the coolest? We just happen to get the angles right with the moon's orbit and the full moon where the very next full moon in about a week, we get moon henge. Look at that. Is so that that's cool? October 1st, right? Due October east. October 1st. Due Do you know, east. Around what time is that going to be rising, Michelle? Um, so that rises in the Chicago area. It rises a little before seven. So 6.53 p.m. You're going to have to look up moonrise for your specific location to be able to see what time it is. So don't take it as 6.53 p.m. for absolutely everywhere on planet Earth. Um, so look up 
your local uh, full moon moonrise time on October 1st, and you may get to see Moonhenge. Or you may get to see me out there. If you also live in Chicago, I'll be out there trying to take pictures because I didn't know, I didn't think to look up to see whether or not this would happen. And um, so I'm so glad this person asked this question. Yeah, that was a great question. So, okay, next question. Uh, we, uh, can we see it without being downtown? Uh, oh. Yes. So yes, uh, you can see it on any east west streets. It's just going to look different. Uh, the downtown tall buildings do a really good job of framing it a certain way, so it looks really cool. But I did some experimentation this morning, actually, uh, with the sunrise, trying to find other places and other streets around my neighborhood, which is not close to downtown, uh, that also frame the sun. And there are places that do it pretty well. So still go outside. I mean, still look for it. And if you don't need, if you don't want to frame it between necessarily like exactly down the street, there are still other cool places to see it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yep. Yep. It may also depend. Are you near a hill? Um, are there tall buildings? Are there trees in the way? There's some other stuff that, that could yeah. happen that may, may cause you to have to change your, change your position a little bit, but yeah, the, just East West. That's all you need for this one. Yeah. Just an East West. We've street. got a note too, that uh, Michelle sees Henge uh, in her rural area through trees at the end of the east-west street. So I also have a lot of trees uh, in my neighborhood. So the trees also perfectly frame the rising or setting sun. Um, yeah. Still yep. cool. Yeah. My problem is there are so many trees around here that I just don't see sunset. So all of you who are able to see this, you, you got a little better than I do here in the western suburbs. So, yeah. all right. Any other questions before we go on? Uh, we've got, can you clarify which streets in Chicago you can see this from, please? Yes, any east-west streets. They just have to be directly east, directly west streets. Um, but you can also, I mean, at different times of the year, uh, you can possibly look at some different places and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, yep. And there's also, where is the best view of Chicago? Hench, same answer, just any uh, east-west streets. So yep. it's not too difficult to find. Um, you guys will absolutely be able to see it. Yep, absolutely. All right, any others before we go on? I think that is all we have for now. Awesome. Um, so I have a question, Michelle. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we actually view and photograph Chicago Henge? All right, so um, I'm gonna show a drawing of this. So let's see if Zoom and PowerPoint will share nicely together, so. Hang on. Hang I believe on. in them. I think they can do it. Let's see. Did that work? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So we have to give a shout out to our, our graphic artist, Arilla at the Adler. She created this, um, uh, this uh, amazing illustration. So this is what it could look like if you were downtown uh, to be able to see Chicago Henge. And so you have to find uh, the right time and location. So you're going to choose either sunrise or sunset or both, depending on depending on if you want to be out uh, for either one in Chicago. The, in the Chicago area, so uh, basically, if you're in the in the city or in the in the burbs around Chicago, Kankakee, all that. This uh, this is all good for that. Um, so in Chicago, sunrise time tomorrow is 6:39 a.m. Um, and you want to get out just a little bit before that time. So maybe go out about 6:30, just so you're in the right spot. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to see the sun. So just after it's fully risen. It should be framed by whatever is on either side of your street. Um, alternatively, if you want to do it for sunset, so that will be in Chicago, 647 p.m. Again, depending on where you are, if you're in a different part of the country, uh, your sunrise and sunset time will be different. And uh, so, again, maybe get out about 10 minutes prior to sunset and see if you can photograph this and to be able to frame it in trees, buildings, the street, whatever you've got in the area. So just before the sun sets, do west. All right. So... Hmm, but I'll bet, I'll bet we've got a question. Adriana, what, I, I have a feeling you're gonna ask me something important. I am. Um, <laughs> thank you for knowing. Uh, not everybody lives in Chicago um, right. and not everybody has streets that are directly due east or due west. So is there a way 
um, for other people to enjoy Chicago Henge or enjoy trying to find their own henges in their respective neighborhoods or parts of the world? Yeah, so here in the Midwest, a good chunk of the Midwest is on a grid system. So we've got north-south streets and we got east-west streets. But a lot of us live in subdivisions. We may live on streets in the city that don't uh, directly face east, face east or west. Um, so what do we do if we're maybe um, uh, looking in some other area? Well, we gave you a picture earlier that actually does illustrate this. The name of this phenomenon, Chicago Henge, we can't totally claim to have come up with that completely by ourselves. Um, the original name came from Manhattan Henge. Our friends at the American Museum of Natural History, uh, they coined that term Manhattan Henge a few years ago, um, but the streets there don't run exactly east or west. So um, the sun is in alignment with Manhattan streets at a different time than what we have in Chicago. So this is a picture of Manhattan. It is not on the equinoxes. It's on a different date. So they've worked it out for whatever the date is that works for them. Um, so we can observe this almost anywhere, just maybe not on the same date if you're not on an east or west street. So what can we do? So we've got a little uh, pocket computer known as your phone. And this is where your phone is going to come in really handy for this. And um, you need to figure out your street angle. So I live on a street that is not directly east west. So this this next uh, set of instructions will work for me really well. So um, to find out what direction your street aligns, you will need to take out your phone and if you have a compass app if you don't have a compass app you can get a compass app they have a zillion of them out there um and so these are screenshots of my phone and so i was pointing my phone in different directions and i was reading off the um the angle of what direction i was facing so to find out how uh how this will work you want to stand on a street that's aligned northeast to southwest or southeast to northwest, something like that. Um, and streets that are mostly north-south, this won't work. But as long as your street has a pretty good angle to it, then at some point during the year, maybe not on the equinoxes, but at some point during the year, um, you'll be able to uh, figure out the date. And so we're going to tell you how to do how to do this. So once you're standing where you'd like to observe, don't stand in the middle of the street. Stay on the side of the street. One, once you're standing where you want to observe, point your phone in, in the direction when you've got your compass app open and read off the angle. All right. So in astronomy, we call this azimuth. Azimuth is the angle from north. Zero degrees is north. 90 degrees is east. 180 degrees is south. 270 degrees is west and then back to zero degrees or 360 degrees if you've done a complete circle is back to north. And so you want to find out, turning your phone, what angle your sunrise position is or what angle your street, sorry, what angle your street is um, for sunrise or sunset, whatever one you want to get. And so once you've read off that angle, um, you want to record it. And you record the, the direction that you're facing because Adriana has some information that she's going to give you what you can do with that. But I'm going to give you one hot tip. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to give you one hot tip. And that hot tip is don't stand in, next to or inside of really large metal structures or even just a building. That's going to mess up your compass direction more than likely. Um, so, for example, if we were at the Adler Planetarium, if you have visited us, you know that our sky pavilion has really big metal beams running through all the glass. Well, that's not a great place sometimes to use your compass. So you want to get away from a large metal structure, all right? So you have gone outside, you've figured out what angle you want to get, you've written it down, okay? So it's going to be somewhere, it's going to be some angle like 45 degrees, 86 degrees, 120 degrees, something like that. You're going to get that angle, all right? So Adriana, what are they going to do with that information? 
yeah, they are going to use that to figure out uh, when the sun will actually be in that position so that you know when the sun is going to be aligned with your street. And you can do that using a website called timeanddate.com. So Geza in the chat also suggested Naval Observatory, which I haven't used before, but might I, also what, be cool. When you're done, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Naval Observatory website. I have used it, so go ahead. Oh, Great. don't let me forget and I'll tell people about that. I won't let you forget. All right, um, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. Um, it's by going to timeanddate.com. So I'm gonna start from the homepage so that you guys can see uh, exactly what to do. You go to sun and moon, and since we're talking, we're looking for the sun's position, we're going to sun calculator. And then you type in the location that you're at. But I'm in Chicago, so I'm going to type in Chicago. Now, when you scroll down, you're going to see this very exciting chart here that tells you the sunrise and sunset times, and it has these angles uh, right next to them. These are the same angles that you were looking at with your compass. They are um, the angle from uh, where the sun is to north. So uh, you want to look for an angle that will line up with whatever you found on your compass. And then you'll see if that is either a sunrise or a sunset time. And the sun will be in that position at the time on the chart. That's all you have to do. It's not super complicated. The caveat is that there is a limitation on how far north or south the sun is going to rise or set over the course of the year. And that depends on where you live. So if you want to find out where those um, angular limits are, you can go scroll over to uh, June 21st, which is the summer solstice. Uh, or December 21st, which is the winter solstice, and those will have the um, angular limits. Everything else is going to be between those two um, angles. But you can use that. You find the time. For example, if I got, uh, if my angle was 286, I would see that it's going to be in that position at sunset, which will be at 739 on the 22nd of August. And that's it. Then you just show up. There you go. Just so, here. yep, and it's it's really cool because you can uh, customize this for where exactly you want to view. It could be your street, it could be a park, it could be your neighbor's house, whatever. Um, and and so as long as you don't go past, as long as wherever it is doesn't go past those limits on the solstices, you will at some point during the year see your sunrise or sunset location. Um, uh, for framed by your street or whatever landmark you want to pick. So um, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, the U.S. Naval Observatory website, I have used that site as well. And I know they were undergoing um, uh, some redo of their site several months ago. I don't know if they finished that yet. Uh, but what you can do on the U.S. Naval Observatory site is put in your location. You can do a city name. You can do your latitude and longitude, whatever you've got. Um, and then you can print out a chart for the entire year of what Very your, cool. um, yep, for, for your azimuth uh, for the sun. And so that is really helpful to see it all in one year. So if you want to do that, you can do that via the Naval Observatory website. If you just want to scroll through, you can do it on the time and date website. You may have your favorite other resource that you might um, want to use for that. So if anybody else has any other resources that they want to share for uh, finding that sort of information, please do. This is as much your show as it is. Ours. So I do want to point out um, that somebody in the chat said one of the best spots in Chicago to check out this occurrence is between Kinsey and Madison streets. Uh, so that seems like the, the place to take the best photos, according to Dee, the woman who dances with cats. Thank you, Dee. I hope you're having a great time dancing with cats. Sounds great. Dee, I'm, I'm really amazed that one of my cats hasn't come dancing through the camera view. Um, so we've still got <laughs> one sleeping over here, which makes me worried that the other one is going to be showing up at some point. So anyway, all right. Now, um, it's one thing to be able to see Chicago Henge. But we want to uh, take pictures. Yeah, don't you want to take pictures of this? You want to record this. You want to text your friends. You want to uh, put it on Facebook. You want to share this this phenomenon with everyone else who wasn't able to do it. So um, I'm going to talk real quick about how you can actually record Chicago Henge using nothing more than your phone. Okay, so you want to stand in the spot where you want to frame buildings, all right, or you want to frame trees or whatever the landmark is, and you can 
um, go to your camera app. So I'm going to go to my camera app. So I've got my camera app. See, there I am right there. All right. But um, my camera is fine for something of this brightness, but the sun is pretty bright. So you'll probably want to knock the sun's brightness down just a bit. Um, so you'll be able to capture the setting or rising sun. You want to just tap on your image and at least on the iPhone, and we know this can happen for the Android too. You want to tap on the image of the sun and you want to, uh, the, on my phone, a little box comes up with a little sun symbol next to it. And I can click and drag that little sun symbol downward. And that will reduce the brightness of my screen. It will reduce the brightness of the thing I just tapped uh, on my screen. So you can lower the brightness of your overall view. And then you can snap the picture. All right. So you'll have to adjust the brightness of the sun um, in your picture. But that's it. That's all you need to do. I think I could even handle that. So easy peasy. Uh, easy peasy. Yep. Um, now, the if you miss it tomorrow, we know it's supposed to be clear in the Chicago area. Um, so tomorrow's weather should be really good. If you miss it, don't worry. This happens every single equinox. So if you miss it tomorrow, just wait till till March and we get to do this all over again. All right. Yeah. Another note, too, from Geza in the chat um, is that the sun is still going to be sort of close to the same spot in the next day. So if you want to try it out the next day or the next couple of days, give that a shot too. It might not line up perfectly, um, as perfectly as it will tomorrow, but you might still be able to get a good image. Right, and uh, that's a good point that it also might depend on how wide your street is. If yeah. your street is a little extra wide, then you got a little extra wiggle room to be able to play with for the sun to rise. It will rise to the east and then angle to the southeast. So right. you may get a little extra time depending on how wide the street is, how tall the buildings are. Um, so that's a great point to make that you might get a, another, maybe another day or two um, before the phenomenon disappears till March. So, all right. Now, we know that east-west facing structures um, are really good for this. And so uh, if you've got a view straight down to the horizon, we know the lakefront is a great place to see straight down to the horizon. Um, and so Adriana has a picture of this. I'm going to share it. Let's see if this works. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some explaining to do, but yes. yes. You, you definitely do. So. <laughs> It didn't turn uh, out like I expected, you guys, but I'm still yeah. sharing it. <laughs> All right. This will show Adriana's fail but not. So Fail but not. All right. Yeah. Um, so if you are thinking to yourself, hey, that arch looks really cool. I bet the sun will look really neat framed in it. And it looks kind of like it's east facing, right? Um, just a quick note, you might be wrong. <laughs> You should use your compass <laughs> app to double check the direction. So my intention was to capture the sun in the very center. Um, it turns out that this uh, arch is actually northeast facing. It is not directly east facing, but I was still able to catch uh, the sun. It was just in between the other sets of arches. Uh, so that is my version of Chicago Henge. I am going to use my compass and find a different time to see when this particular henge is going to be happening. I think it's going to be next summer, um, but stay tuned. I will get a better picture of it. <laughs> but it's perfectly framing the arch over yeah. the bicycle in the picture. So yes, you that's my bicycle. It. You, you <laughs> set the scene just right. So I got, I got pretty close. I did make another <laughs> attempt as well. Uh, that's the next shot. I know uh, Michelle was saying in the chat that uh, you can find a way to frame your own henge in your own neighborhood that in her streets, you can see it between the trees. So I found some good trees here that I thought would perfectly frame the sun and captured it in the middle. Now this one came out pretty good, but I do wanna share these to help you guys learn from my mistakes. If you have a, uh, thank you, it is tree henge. <laughs> um, if you have a case, on your phone, uh, it might actually create a glare like you see just down to the left of the sun here. So I would recommend taking off the case if you're trying to get an image of something as bright as the sun, it might help you a little bit. I think it would have helped me a little bit. Um, and my other advice is to use the compass and make sure that you measure what you're trying to do. Uh, last thing too, so I tried to get this same shot kind of close to these trees and I found that the further that I backed away, the trees kind of shrunk, but the sun stayed the same size. 
that helped um, them look a little bit more like they were uh, the same relative size, which made the sun look bigger in the picture once I zoomed in. So if you're trying to frame the sun in something, but you want it to look a little bit bigger, back up. Um, yep. it'll, it'll get you a better shot, kind of like it did in this image. Cause you can, you can tell the sun looks bigger in this one than it did in the other picture that I shared with you guys. And I'm seeing the water down there near the bottom too. And, and one yeah. thing, one thing that it, it always looks great, the water there in the trees, that's really cool. But also the sun itself, we, we gotta, we gotta bring, uh, what's happening out West into this. And those are those, the wildfires happening out West, which the smoke has traveled this far. It's high flying. Um, but the sun is a little dimmer in the sky because of the wildfires that have been happening. So if you've been noticing that, um, that's the reason why, and we've still got it around here. So, uh, and one other thing you may get that we occasionally get questions about a lot, um, someone will take a picture of the sun or a bright light or even the moon, and there'll be like a little circle down to some corner, kind of like a little bit like what Adriana has, but it might be a little more perfect of a circle. That's a lens flare. And you may get that in your picture. It's just an internal reflection of a bright light inside your camera. And so if you get that, it's not a UFO. It's, it's not a planet that's never been discovered before. It's not any of those. It's just so a bright light that's reflecting around on the inside of your camera. Um, so you may you may actually see that in your picture. Don't worry, it's totally normal. You may just have to move your phone around a little bit to to or tilt it a little to see if you can get that to kind of line up with the sun and then go away. So anyway, well, if you've ever wanted your photos to look like a J.J. Abrams movie, now is the time. Take a picture <laughs> of the sun, capture your lens flare. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's fond of the lens flares. I love him, but yeah. <laughs> so remember, it it doesn't have to be directly east west. It can be wherever you happen to be standing. Just get that angle, figure it out with your compass app. Go to the chart, figure out if the sunrise or sunset will be at that angle. Boom! You can make your own henge, but it gets even better. There is one more way to make your own henge. There's one more henge. This is Adriana Henge. <laughs> so if you are looking for something silly, but also fun to do, um, I made my own tiny henge for my window uh, out of clay. <laughs> and it is not yet aligned, but I did draw some paths on the bottom. So the idea is that the center, <laughs> the center one is going to have um, the sun lined up with it on the equinox, the spring and the fall equinox, and the two on the sides uh, will work with the sunrises for the uh, summer solstice and for the winter solstice. Now they are not in perfect alignment, as you can probably tell. Um, once I get them perfectly aligned, the paths on the bottom are going to line up with the uh, the little beams of light coming through them. I love that Aaron Wilson said that they're also good for uh, Pi Day. I agree. Oh, yeah. yes. Um, but yes, March, March 14th, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, my east facing windows don't get a view all the way down to the horizon. I feel like if you live in the city, that is probably pretty rare. Uh, you are probably seeing the sun only when it peaks over the building across the street. Uh, the same is true for me. So I am actually going to line up my tiny Adriana hinges based on when the sun not rises, but when it peaks over the building across the street so that I can actually start to see it. So that's why I'm not using the exact alignment from um, timeanddate.com. And Adriana, I'm really surprised that Tiny Adriana has not made an appearance in Tiny Adriana Henge. And if oh, you don't know what I'm talking about, Tiny Adriana does appear in one of our other videos that we have available to explain, uh, I believe it was Seasons? Was it? Uh, it was the Phases of the Moon. Phases of the Moon, right. So if you look up um, on our YouTube channel, you may see a Phases of the Moon video uh, featuring Tiny Adriana. So She'll make another Tiny, appearance. She'll make another appearance in the future so anyway oh, i love really um cool. john says awesome henge i thought they were marshmallows s'more henge i just want to say for the record that that is possible you can make your own s'more henge i don't know exactly what it would look like and also you probably shouldn't leave it out for a long time but try it and take a picture and share it with us see that's the key 
This is another way we want you to interact with us, share with us. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, but we want you to share your creations with us, share your photos with us, share your successes, share your temporary science fails that just turned into an, an educational experience. Um, share all this with us. You can do this if it's public art near you that has a, an alignment with the sun or even the moon. Um, you can make your own henge out of marshmallows or whatever it is you want to, to do. Um, please share that with us. You can share it on uh, at Adler Planet on Twitter, Adler Planetarium on Facebook. Um, and we want to see these. We really do. Um, this isn't just us going, yeah, this is another way to get you involved. No, we really do want to see this because who knows, one of your pictures may make an appearance in a future Sky Observers Hangout show. So, Absolutely. Do we have any other questions that people have been asking? Any comments? I'm take a look. I think most of our questions have been promptly answered in the chat by our pal Stargazer. Thank you, oh, Stargazer. Thanks, Gaza. We really appreciate that. Well, if you ever find that you have another question uh, that we didn't answer or you think of it 20 minutes after the show ends, you always can tweet at us. You can send us a Facebook post. You also can send an email to uh, askadler at adlerplanetarium.org. Um, Geza reads these. I read these. Uh, others of our astronomers read these. There are other folks at Adler who answer these questions. So you always can interact with us. That's what we love about our jobs. We get to interact with you. We may not be able to do it in person just yet. We will eventually. Um, but while we are distant, we share the same sky. Um, but we do want to be able to interact with you however we possibly can. We love seeing how you interact with the sky. So um, Adriana, any last parting words before we end for tonight? Uh, a shout out to both Linda and Geza who pointed out Donehenge, um, which is one of our buildings at the Adler actually also acts as a henge for the sunrise on the um, two solstices, which is very cool. Um, yep. And it says, uh, oh, Sylvia E. Sanchez says, do we have an Instagram account? I believe we do. I think it's Adler Planet. I yes, I believe. Uh, yes, I believe it's Adler Planet. Yes. Um, so yeah. yes, you absolutely can follow us on Instagram, uh, send us pictures on Instagram. And oh, absolutely. Actually, on the very last slide that I'm going to show in just a little bit, um, it has our, uh, our various uh, social media feeds on there. So just take a screenshot, take a picture, follow us, and we would love to see your pictures and your comments and all your successes. So anything else before we end for tonight? We've got one more. Oh, I don't know if I, I don't know the answer to this one, but let's find out. Let's try. Uh, I, uh, John says, I recently read that Sir Edmund Halley tried to establish longitude by observing the motions of Jupiter's moons. Is that a question? Where's the question? I oh, think- Oh, Geza says yes. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure that is true. I don't know the details. I hope Geza does. We will. We will delay slightly because I, I'd like to really know the answer to this. Maybe Geza is furiously typing right now. So we are stalling just a minute or so to see if he can throw a little extra detail in there or a resource that we all can go read after we're done um, to be able to uh, learn more about this. So yeah, the I know the determination of longitude was incredibly important. Um, and something that it was a it was a race to be able to do uh, because for navigation purposes all these far flung places on planet Earth to be able to travel from one to the next knowing your your longitude was extremely important and so um, the the first people who could actually figure it out reliably uh, they were. Uh, going to be made famous. And so um, this is, uh, I believe there was a book by Deva Sobel uh, called Longitude, all about this. So that is Very one cool. resource that I know we can read. Um, is, I, is, I bet you Gaze is furiously typing. He is, he's the fingers oh, he absolutely across is. that keyboard. So um, anyway, uh, I don't know about you, Adriana. I had a lot of fun with this topic. Did you? I did too. You got and, one more note from somebody in our chat, um, yep. which I can fully agree with. Uh, this is the time that sunsets right now on North Avenue in Chicago, and um, the sunsets are really awesome. Yep. And I want to note, I went outside this morning 
uh, to catch the sunrise so that I could frame it in something so that I could get this Chicago henge picture, right? But it was also one of the first times in a long time that I've actually seen the sunrise or caught a sunset. Um, so even if you're not going to frame it in something magical or find the exact right position to get the exact right picture on the street, go out and catch a sunset or a sunrise. It's probably been a long time for you too, and it's beautiful. Yep, absolutely. And September gives us some really great weather. I know that on Wednesday, it probably won't be great weather because the cloudiness from Tropical Storm Beta um, is going to come into our area. I don't know if we'll get any rain, but um, so Wednesday may not be a great time for the Chicago area anyway, and point south. Um, but you may want to give it a try maybe Thursday because the weather should be pretty decent then. So give it a whirl. So yeah. Anyway. All right. Um, well, while all our uh, doors are temporarily closed for guests, our work in sharing the sky with you guys continues, albeit virtually. So if you have the means, uh, please consider donating to support the work that we're doing at the Adler um, so that we can keep doing it and create, keep creating this kind of content to share our universe with you. Yes. Um, here, here. Yeah. And uh, Adriana, we have a program next Monday at 7 p.m. Central. Yes. What, is, what is that one about? The fall sky. It will officially be fall. It will be time to get cozy and look at some stars. So come join us for that next week on yep. Monday at 7 p.m. Same place. Yep. We're going to talk about the bright stars visible, the constellations, planets, all the stuff that you will need um, to get ready to enjoy the sky in the fall, which has some beautiful weather. Um, so we hope you can get out there and safely uh, observe the sky. So Adriana, thank you so much for all of this. It's been a lot of fun. Geza and Jennifer, thank you both. I know you, you guys are out there listening. Thank you to all of you who tuned in. Again, if you don't follow us on our social media feeds, we will have that information up in just a second. Um, we hope you can join us for a future Sky Observers Hangout. And please keep looking up. Thanks a lot. Good night, everyone. Good night.